refurbishing a vintage model steamboat and this is part 20 fitting the steam plant into the boat the difficult part when i first looked at this job i did realize it was not going to be plain sailing please pardon the pun during the course of these rebuilds and renovations i always try and do the job like it was my own model it's the only way i can work really so i always try and make it so the parts that are fit in a model are always serviceable i'd never permanently fix something in place any parts that are fit in this boat need to be easily removed for servicing. The engine being a prime candidate for this. Originally this engine was bolted into the boat using 7BA fixings and there's nothing wrong with 7BA fixings. Stuart models use 7BA fixings for holding the main part of the engine down to the box beds on a lot of the smaller models. This is a 7BA nut spinner and what I do with these nut spinners now and again I modify them. I cut a slot in the top so I can use a screwdriver on them because sometimes it's impossible to get your hand in, like in this boat, to tighten the nuts in place. One of the reasons for using this type of nut spinner with the knurled grip is that you can't put too much pressure on so therefore you will not shear the nuts and bolts. In practice though you can still actually shear a 7BA bolt just by gripping the knurled part and rotating it. So, as you can imagine, by inserting a screwdriver blade in, one has to be very careful. The slot in the top of the nut spinner was made using my bandsaw, and this piece of silicone rubber holds the screwdriver blade into the slot. In the end, after much messing about, I decided to not use the 7BA method, and here you see me threading the hole, which is an eighth of an inch diameter, using a 4BA tap. So I'm cutting a thread of 4BA size in the base. And then what I'm going to do is use a 4BA bolt in each of these four mounting points from underneath the cut down box bed to securely fasten the engine onto this cut down box bed which in turn is bolted into the boat. At the moment I'm carefully removing the tap. You have to be very very careful doing jobs like this. The last thing I want to do is to snap off the tap. In this clip I'm screwing in two temporary brass countersunk 4BA bolts on one side of the engine just to make sure that everything lines up. And then I place the engine into the boat and connect the prop shaft. And the propeller goes round. At this point the engine is not bolted into the boat, it's just sat in there. So this is a good sign because the engine is not leaping all over the place. As you can see, it's quite still. And it really is not fastened in, it's just sat there. The engine's actually found its own position. And unfortunately the position of the engine does not align with the bolts through into the bed plate. So I'm going to have to modify this. And this is nothing to do with the original builder, this is a different engine, so it's just not lining up quite correctly. I've tried to make the video pain free, because in reality this engine went in and out of the boat, and each time it was out of the boat I modified its position on the bed plate, until when I finally put it in the boat for the last time, and bolted it in place, it was perfectly aligned with the prop shaft and sounded very sweet. With the help of my small torch, because it's very dark in there, I'm bolting the box bed, or the cut down box bed should I say, to the main bed plate and I'm currently trying to find the location hole. These location holes are very close to the edge of the box bed and also very close to the engine so I have no choice but to use 7BA bolts. I would have preferred them to be somewhat thicker but it's impossible. As you can see by the light of my small torch, there's no room at all. They're really close to the edge. And thinking about it, I'm also very close to the edge with this job. It really is difficult and it's fiddly to the nth degree. As you can see, another shot here with the little torch. These are really tiny, the screwdriver will not go in exactly at the right angle, but in the end the bolt's nipped up quite nicely and everything is fine. Now if you think that was bad, you want to try doing this. This is the arm I made in a previous episode and this controls the reversing mechanism of the engine. It's just a rocking lever, a bell crank I believe it's called, and the radio control will connect to one arm, and the other arm via a special piece of bent wire moves the reversing mechanism up and down. Time now to test it, and this steam engine does not need much pressure to work. I've not given it enough pressure at the moment, so I'll just open the regulator, give it a little bit more, and off we go. And it's quite nice. So it's time to move the reversing lever and see what happens. And not unsurprisingly, when I move the reversing lever, the engine immediately goes into reverse. So far, so good. It's moving in forward and reverse, and it's not too noisy. It's quite sweet. 
Bear in mind, of course, that the engine is sitting in a big hollow metal shell, so any noise is going to be amplified somewhat. And the entire boat is sat on my elevated soundboard. This is something that I always use for steam engines. It's a piece of plywood that sits on top of two metal bearers that are screwed to the bench. These bearers upon which the plywood sits are really two pieces of track, spaced at seven and a quarter inches for seven and a quarter inch gauge locomotives, which I work on periodically. Here's another shot of the engine and the camera's microphone's in a different position so it sounds a little bit different. This is a very well built engine by a very experienced model engineer and it always did run well. I quite look forward to running it on steam. If you look at the universal joint on the prop shaft you'll see there's a slight gap. This is intentional to allow for expansion and contraction of the crankshaft. Here's another shot of the propeller going round. I find this strangely therapeutic. And when I drop the pressure, and there really is nothing showing on the gauge on the compressor, it goes very slowly indeed. So this really proves that the transmission is fine, it's not binding much, nothing's really tight, and it works well. There's an internal gland nut that should stop any water getting into the boat, and I'm very pleased so far. When I apply slightly more pressure, and there's not a lot here, there's about 25 psi I would think of to guess, you can see the engine really starts the motor. Alright, it's not under load, the propeller's spinning free, but even under load, this would be sufficient to propel the boat through the water at a good speed. When the boat is under steam, I would estimate that the boiler will drop to a pressure of 50 psi when it's running. I've had many double 10 V steam engines on 3.5 inch and also 4 inch diameter boilers and they all seem to drop down to about 50 psi when the boat is sailing around the lake. And this is more than enough for a good scale speed, after all it's not a hydroplane. So fitting the engine was very fiddly. Fitting this pipe went off the scale in fiddliness. The boiler is now in place and I had to tighten this union nut onto the superheater in a very difficult position. You'll just have to take my word for it, I could not get the camera in the correct position, not and be able to tighten the nut at the same time. Once I'd done that, which took well over an hour, and I was ready to bang my head against the bench, this job seemed very simple, fitting the steam tap. I found a washer that was the correct thickness to allow it to end up in the right position. And you will notice from the beginning of this clip, before fitting the valve, I applied some Loctite 542. It's a bit of a belt and braces approach, but I will never get a steam leak in this area. The steam piping from the outlet tap on the top of the boiler to the inlet of the superheater was much easier than the other one. The one from the superheater to the regulator really was quite possibly one of the most difficult piping jobs I've ever undertaken. And now you know why I generally build open steam launchers. I would build the plant outside the boat in its entirety and drop the plant in, but in this boat, I just can't do that. I have to build it in component form. Now this is a really easy job, fitting the safety valve. And once the safety valve is fitted, the boiler system is completely enclosed. The only inlet now to the boiler is the clack valve on the back head. This needs connecting up to the pump. And I can't say I'm looking forward to that because that's quite tight as well. But anyway, nothing can be as bad as the one from the superheater. It's time now to try the superstructure in place. I haven't cleaned this part of the superstructure, so it's looking a bit dusty. And since I've stiffened up every area of the boat, which is now quite solid, it's a tight fit. Not too tight though, and when I think about it, I know why it's a tight fit. I've put the chimney pipe on the wrong way round. Currently, I'm exploring a mark on the side. I don't know where that's come from, but it's going to be repainted anyway. If you look at the chimney, you will notice that it slopes towards the stern of the boat. And similarly, the pipe that leaves the boiler also slopes towards the stern of the boat, but I've got it the wrong way round. That's why it appeared stiff. When I turn the internal pipe round, everything is fine. As you can see in this clip, there are still various repairs to be done on the superstructure. The lifeboats are loose, and I'm going to fasten these down because I don't want them floating off when the boat's sailing. And also, in common with most of the other handrail stanchions, some of these are broken, but they're not too bad really, I think I can actually solder these back in position. Now that the steam plant inside the boat is almost complete, the work will seem to accelerate slightly. But I'm not going to rush it, it's a really nice model and I want to make a good job of it. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.